Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to On Deck. Today, I am joined by a very special guest, Dom Perone. Dom, introduce yourself to our On Deck viewers. Howdy, folks. My name is Dom Perone. I am a senior here at SUNY Oswego. I am studying broadcasting and mass communications. I am an avid baseball fan. It's my favorite sport, and I can't stop talking about it. Now, if there is one thing that you should know about us, it's that we are both diehard Yankees fans, and there is no better time to talk about Yankees baseball than when the Yankees are on the chase for 28. So on today's episode, we are going to be chatting about the Yankees season, Aaron Judge creating baseball history, the ALDS, and so much more coming up on deck. So first order of business, this Yankee team really has some fire beneath their feet this season. What are some of your thoughts on this 2022 Yankees team? I mean, this is one of the best Yankees teams we've seen in a long time. 99 and 63 doesn't quite reflect how good they really were because they had that really unfortunate schneid of games in August where they just couldn't seem to win for losing. Um, but. I thought that the way that they started the season put a lot of pressure on the team's back, but it was, it was an amazing way to start the season. They, they seemed unstoppable, you know? It was reminiscent of the teams from the 90s and even the 20s. But with the bats that they had going this season, even in the latter half, the pitching and everything like that, this team was just, it was amazing to watch. Yeah, and I, I don't think people understand that baseball is such a long season. There's 162 games in a season. No team is going to be completely perfect and not have those little bit of a slumps throughout the season. But as I like to say with the Yankees, I feel like this team is almost like a light switch. When one, when, when one thing's going good, one thing might be struggling a little bit. But this team always finds a way to balance their like pitching to hitting and everything out. It always just kind of figures itself out in the long run, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that, that plagued the Yankees the last few seasons was the injury bug. You know, a lot of big-time players that were going out, you know, it was a bad thing. This year, we didn't really struggle with that. Sure, near the end of the season, DJ LeMayhew, Matt Carpenter, losing those guys was big. We lost Stanton for a little while, but, you know, we, we were able to keep guys like Judge and, and uh, Nestor and a lot of the arms in the bullpen healthy. Yeah, and especially keeping Aaron Judge healthy. I mean, as we know, his season is just literally not even a, like a joke historical and, and Nestor Cortez I mean who would have thought that we would have had this season from Nestor Cortez he absolutely just came out being one of the most reliable pitchers on this team every time Nestor stepped out onto the mound I was like all right this is going to be a good game Nestor's going to go out there for a good six innings and just throw absolute lasers and not to mention his windup still oh is so funny that's one of my favorite things about that guy because not only does the the wind up you know, it looks kind of funny when he kicks his leg around and he then throws the ball. That messes with a batter's timing. So when you start messing with a batter's timing like that, you know, you take a little longer on the windup, you give him a little bit of a fake out, avoiding the balk as best you can, that'll, that'll really cross a guy up in the box. And that was huge to his play. Yeah, and another play, player I don't want to sell short on this 2022 Yankees team that I feel like is just, he gets a lot of recognition, but not the recognition he deserves because obviously there are so many superstars on this team this year. It's absolutely insane. Is my pride and joy. Mr. Anthony Rizzo, absolutely just a phenomenal player this the year. Riz. He the Riz. just, he, he, he came up in so many big moments this season, just absolutely got on base when he needed to, hit the long ball when he needed to, just absolutely a, a a full pl package player. He's, you know he's going to get those snag balls and those tough throws on first base. He's going to do a great job defensively. Offensively, we know he's a great player. And not to mention, he's just a good guy to have in the clubhouse. A veteran player, a player who has a World Series under his belt with the Chicago Cubs. He's just going to be a player that's really going to be a, someone to lead this team a long way. Because if you really think about it, he's the only player on this New York Yankees team who has a World Series now. Yeah, you know, a lot of the guys from the 09 team have, all of the guys from the 09 team have since retired. Guardy was the last one that Gardy was there. Guardy was the last one to go. Sabathia retired a few yep. years ago. Obviously, Sabathia is in the front office now, which is something right. I personally love to see. But Anthony Rizzo has this World Series experience, experience that some of these younger players don't have because yep. the closest thing that this 2022 Yankees team really was to a World Series was in 2017, and they lost a lot of those key players along the way. The only one really left is 
Aaron Judge, I think. Judge, LeMayhew, guys like that. You know, mm -hmm. there, there were a lot of there were a lot of players on that 2017 team because they uh, Stanton came on the year after. 2018, that. yes. Yeah. And um, it was. It was, oh, the Yankees were right on the cusp in 2017. Mm -hmm. you know, it was heartbreaking the way that it all ended. And I won't go into an, an, an anti-Astros, you know, rant here because everybody knows I'm prone to that. But it, it, was, it was a matter of that, that the 2017 team had World Series potential just like this team does. The only thing that I will really miss from this 2022 team is Tanaka. Masahiro Tanaka, which is someone when he came on the mound in the postseason, his postseason ERA, quote me, I may be a little bit off on this, but I believe it was under two. I think closer to one. And that's just unheard of in the postseason to have an ERA for how many playoffs he was in, how many playoff games he pitched. His ERA was so low, and he was just absolutely nasty when it came to pitching in the postseason. And I think out of everyone, out of everything going on in this 2022 postseason, I think I miss Tanaka the most. I'd have to agree with you. I mean, his, his arm in the regular season wasn't always hot. You know, he had his hot and cold streaks. It was whatever. But Tanaka in the postseason was indomitable. Tanaka in the postseason turned into an absolute beast. And I'm so upset that this, I think Tanaka in this 2022 team would have absolutely just been the complete, like, piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the Yankees aren't going to go far to the World Series, but I think if they had Tanaka been a little more of a sure bet. I, I don't think we would be going into a game five on this ALDS. But we cannot talk about this 2022 Yankees team without talking about the man himself, Aaron Judge. I mean, the numbers do not lie with this kid. His batting average was 311, which was fifth in the league. But don't even worry about that number five spot. He's tied in first with 131 runners batted, runners batted in, excuse me, and his first in on-base percentage, not to mention his historic 62 home runs, which obviously puts him in first place for homers. Yes, it does. And I know that this has been a debate for the last month since he hit the home run. Aaron Judge is the undisputed, authentic home run king. I was reading a Sports Illustrated article earlier today, mm -hmm. and Bonds, Barry Bonds, had 73 home runs on the regular season with steroids. McGuire had 70 home runs on the regular season with steroids. Aaron Judge did it completely clean. He did it the right way. And you can't tell me that a guy who is six foot seven and weighs 280 pounds of just sheer muscle can hit 62 home runs. It's what the guy was built for. He is, in my opinion, Bonds and McGuire, it, without their hitting prowess, they wouldn't have been able to hit all of those home runs. But Judge did it the right way. He is the undisputed home run king. He did it the way Maris did it. He did it the way Babe Ruth did it. You can't tell me otherwise. And something else that I really love about Judge, and we talked about it the other day too, is his class, when he goes about anything, it reminds me of, and I know people are always like, you can't compare him to Derek Jeter, you can't compare him to Derek Jeter, but the class and just how he approaches the game and how he, he is the face of the New York Yankees and he gives the New York Yankees a really great face. He's not anybody who's involved in scandals. He's not anybody that you think is gonna be like, doped up or on steroids or anything like that but he's just a great player and a really classy player and it made me so happy to see that his mom was there too that was just a really cute moment that to watch amazing. well and he pointed her out after 60 61 and 62 he pointed her out in the mm -hmm. stands he had no problems acknowledging you know one of the people that helped get him that far to the mlb mm -hmm. and I, i'm a big lou gehrig fan i have the number four on the back of my jersey that's that's who i wear that's my favorite yankee and I believe that Lou Gehrig set the bar for how MLB players should act. Mm -hmm. You know, stand-up guys, they're gentlemen, they have nothing but good things to say about their teammates and, and, and the people they work with on and off the field. And Aaron Judge fits that bill no problem. Because he is. He's a stand-up guy, he's a great athlete, he's got the skill to back it up, and he's never one to, to, to showboat too often. Yeah, he had mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, he was playing the, the boom box mm -hmm. outside of the Red Sox dugout in, what was that, 2018? Mm -hmm. Which came back and bit him, you know? He came back and bit him. Yankees ended up losing that seat. Oh, boy. This, real it hurts. Real heartbreaker. Me. Real heartbreaker. Real heartbreaker. But there was a, uh, Aaron Judge wore a, uh, 
a a sweatshirt. Yeah, the, the hoodie that said um, New York Forever. Yeah, it was like New York Forever or New York or nothing or something. You can tell the guy wants to stay in New York. He doesn't want to go anywhere else. Yeah, and I think we, I think Aaron Judge is somebody. He's such a classy player to the point where he's not going to go exactly where all the money is. I think at this point in his career, I think obviously we'll get into it more a little bit. But the postseason, once the postseason ends, obviously he's going to be a free agent this yep. upcoming off season. I genuinely think he will stay with the Yankees, though, just because, I mean, you got Judge's Chambers. He came up with the Yankees. I, I just don't see him playing anywhere else other than in those New York Yankee pinstripes. Agreed. Agreed. He should be a forever Yankee. And now, have you, he, was almo he almost got the triple crown. Do you know what a quadruple triple crown is? I do. A little bit. So the quadruple triple <laughs> crown, for those who don't know, is when a single player leads the league in home runs, runs batted in, Batting average, runs, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, on-base plus slugging percentage, walks, extra base hits, total bases, uh, uh, wins above replacement, and WRC plus, which I can't remember what it is <laughs> off the top of my head. But Aaron Judge led the league in, I think, nine of those categories this season. So, right. It was a f fantastic season for Judge. History right there it was perfect almost almost <laughs> almost he was this close but it can still be a perfect season because i hope that if the yankees went when the yankees win the world series fingers crossed i think he could take home world series mvp and this season i believe that he will take home the mvp for the american league no oh. doubt about it i know there's a debate with shohei otani shohei otani is a phenomenal player do not get me wrong i think shohei otani is a top five mlb player right now I think with the season that Aaron Judge had, sure you can say, oh, oh shit, Otani can pitch and he can hit. Aaron Judge just absolutely had a breakout season, and especially with the way he got snubbed in 2017, I'm still upset about it, clearly. I think he deserves this 2022 MVP more than anyone right now. If he doesn't get MVP this season, it would have been the biggest snub since Judge didn't get the MVP in 2017. The guy has put up one of the best batting seasons of all time, and that is an undisputed fact because the numbers are right there. With how, with how obsessed everybody is in baseball with statistics nowadays, the statistics are there. They, you can look at them. And another thing I want to highlight, too, is with this Yankees team this year, I think Aaron Boone has done a fantastic job of stepping away a little bit more from the statistics. I think his first few seasons of managing the team, he really relied on what the, what the, what the people in his ear were telling him, especially when it came to the pitching aspect of it. When pitchers were feeling good, he just – took him out because, you know, the whole three batter rules thing started and mm -hmm. to put in these pitchers when these people were batting. And I think once he started easing off of analytics is more and just started focusing on the players and how they're feeling and how this game is going, I think that's also has what led this Yankees team to much more success this year. Absolutely. You know, ever since uh, Moneyball came out, never since the Oakland A's had this statistics uh, 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 you know, huzzah moment or a, a eureka moment. That's what I was looking for. But ever since they, they brought together this, this whole statistics-based baseball thing, every team does it. Every team does it. And the Yankees, with Aaron Boone as manager, ever since, you know, when they fired Girardi, you could tell. You could tell that he was listening to the guys up in the, in the, in the booth. You know, he was listening to the statistics. He's such a good ball player in his own right. He should, he should be able to run this team no problem now. But with the ALCs right around the corner, we cannot skip over the Yankees postseason run, which we will get right into right after the break. We will be right back on deck. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.
12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back to On Deck. This has been an intense ALDS so far, so we have to recap what's gone down in these past four games. I think we want to start off with game one, and one thing I want to talk about really is Garrett Cole's pitching in game one. Okay. <laughs> Garrett Cole is subpar in game one. Okay. For nine straight games, the guy gave up a dinger, at least one in each of them which to me is not an ace. That is not an ace pitcher to me. A guy that steps up there, you expect, because he can strike out anybody. I mean, he was getting close. I think he broke Ron Guidry's single season strikeout record for the Yankees. But that's great. Stop giving up so many home runs. Stop giving up the, because because what he does is he finds the guys with the lower batting averages and he thinks he can groove a 95 mile an hour fastball by him down the pipe and expect them not to swing at it. These guys are big leaguers. Of course they're going to crush it. So I'm going to disagree a little bit because I thought Garrett Cole had a pretty solid outing in game one. I have the sixes. I said he pitched for seven innings game one. He allowed four hits and he struck out eight batters, which is just what we expect to see from Garrett Cole going into the postseason. Obviously, he says that pressure is a privilege. Obviously, this is a pressure situation. We expect him to go out there and be the ace that he is. And I think even though he had a few rocky moments, obviously he got that pitch count up early in the game. He still held on and gave that Yankees offense the chance to produce what they needed to do because so far what I've seen from this Yankee offense this postseason is that they've been pretty cold compared to what we've seen in the regular season. So I will say that Garrett Cole does get my stamp of approval for game one. Well, I'm not going to say it here and say <laughs> he's a bad pitcher. I don't think he's a bad pitcher. You know, he, he can strike him out. He can, he can pitch well. He knows how to get around batters. But he's got to stop giving up the long ball. Then he'll be an ace. That's what, I, that's what my thing is, is he's not quite an ace. Nestor, to me, is the New York Yankees' ace pitcher. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> All right, I got to think about this one a little bit because um, I, Nestor Cordes, I mean, look at that snub. That's from uh, game, that, that's game two. Uh, game yeah. two, yeah. Sorry, yes, that's just playing my uh, mind. Game two was rained out, so that one was played in the afternoon. Nestor Cordes. Nesta Cortez just had a fantastic game, game two, but let's go back to game one. Harrison Bader. Harrison Bader is the reason why the New York Yankees are going into a game five tonight. And you can't, I, I will not let anybody tell me that I'm wrong right now. No, that's, I'm not, and I'm not going to this time. Yeah. This, this, yeah. You're, you're, you're going to yeah. hear it straight up from me. He, Bader is the unsung hero of the playoffs for the Yankees this year. Guy came on from the St. Louis Cardinals, right? Yeah, and, which most people were upset about. And if you were upset, this is a PSA. <laughs> if you are now, if you were one to complain about Harrison Bader going to the New York Yankees after the postseason he's had so far, I want you to take everything bad you've said about him back. Agreed. Right Agreed. Because the guy He's has produced. been a major player for us in the playoffs. He is why we are still around. Exactly. He had a home run in the third of game one, which obviously put the Yankees up, got that momentum going, and then Anthony Rizzo had another homer. Obviously, Anthony Rizzo, as we said, has been just a – Yankees offensive weapon this season and he brings that right into the postseason Aaron Judge obviously he had 62 home runs this season he's been a little bit cold so far in the postseason we'll get into that a little bit more once we get into um, game three but obviously Yankees took the win game one um, and then they headed out excuse me they did not head out to Cleveland yet they stayed in Yankee Stadium and had a rain delay and there was a postseason game in the daylight which just didn't feel right no. to me at all. No. A postseason game during a 2 o'clock in the afternoon just didn't feel like a postseason game to me. But we got to see Nestor on the mound, which was something I always love to see. And Nestor Cortez on the mound is just always it, – it, it, it almost makes me laugh 
because he's just so much fun to watch on the mound the way he approaches every pitch and I can't I wonder you know what I also think about too is if he still has the turtle the t oh Bronxy the turtle the from turtle. last season right. <laughs> I forgot about Bronxy a little bit and then I watched him on the mound the other day and I was like god I wonder if they still have that turtle I bet you they do that's not something they'll just toss away but I, I, I was listening to one of the the playoff games on the radio because I love John Sterling and Susan Waldman those are those are two broadcasters that I've looked up to since I was a kid and Susan pointed out that you know Nestor wasn't pitching but he is still the happiest guy in the dugout. He's always joking around with the guys. He's always, you know, he's up on the, on the rail up there, right near the edge of the mm -hmm. dugout, cheering the guys on. He could be in sweatpants for all we care, and he is always up there supporting the team. So not only is he a force on the mound, he's a force on the team. He's another great clubhouse guy to have. He is a great clubhouse guy. Um, but, but one other thing that I want to focus on for game two is Shane Bieber's pitching, and this is why I was a little bit frazzled with game two is you look back to the 2020 wild card game when the Yankees faced the um, Guardians out in Cleveland and they just absolutely dominated Shane Bieber on the mound and their offense just couldn't produce this year and even if you look at Shane Bieber's numbers his numbers have declined since 2020 and I'm just that concerns me for going into as of right now game five who Shane Bieber is I believe on the mound yes he is and that's gonna be uh that's going to be a very tough matchup for the Yankees if they can't seem to figure him out, especially, the numbers have <clears throat> especially if the numbers have been on the decline for him. But I feel like coming up here tonight is going to be a very, very, very important outing for everybody. No matter who you are a fan of, no matter what team you're on, whatnot, both the Guardians and the Yankees are going to be at a top level of performance. There is... I wouldn't be shocked if this game goes 20 innings. I mean, that's because as much as I don't want the Guardians to win, you got to give them credit for how much drive they have as a team. They are, they're just as powerful as the Yankees are in that sense because they have a great sense of camaraderie on the team. They're a strong baseball team. They belong in the playoffs, otherwise they wouldn't be there. But it's, it's something that they got, it's something the Yankees have to contend with because with, when a team doesn't just lay down for them, you know, you tend to start to underestimate an opponent or you tend to start making, you know, silly mistakes that you wouldn't have made earlier on in the season because it's such a high pressure situation. And, and I think the Cleveland Guardians is one thing that everybody talked about before when they were going into the postseason is how hard this team hustles. And that really shows in their postseason too. This team is a great base running team. They're going to steal yeah. bases and they're just going to hustle to every single ball. And I think they are just as good as this Yankees team. You look at the numbers, they were pretty much 50 50 when it comes to win losses. They just didn't get as much as attention as the Yankees because obviously, I mean, at the end of the day, the New York Yankees are the New York Yankees. And also, they just didn't have that extreme hot streak that the Yankees had in a while. But looking forward to game five, we're going to see James Italian back on the mound, which... How did you pronounce his name? James Italian. Jameson Tyler. James... The pitcher on the mound James for the Yankees Italian. today is Jameson Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> That's almost as bad Jesus as when... Jesus and Tyon. I'm J so sorry. That's almost as bad as when David Cohn called Jonathan Loizaga Johnny Lasagna. He still calls him that, but it's a joke now. But Tyon. Tyon, yeah. <laughs> Tyon is an amazing arm on the mound. He has done a lot for the Yankees this season. I mean, an unstoppable force again. Uh, one of the more recent games I watched him pitching, and I think it was one of the last games of the regular season, shut him down. Shut the Texas Rangers right down. It's fantastic. And another thing, Aaron Boone, too, said that um, Nestor Cortez is available tonight, if need be, which also makes me feel a lot better about going into the night's game because last night I was, I was really scared. Well, I was very scared. I don't blame you. But that's something that the Yankees, I think, have been struggling in in this postseason so far is how much we, have, you, we I say it like I'm on the team, how much the Yankees have used the bullpen. You know, yeah, we've got to – They've got a lot of strong arms in the bullpen, and they're, they're sound arms. You know, it's, it, you can pull any one of them in, and they'll pitch well, usually. But we've used a lot of those guys. At this point, I'm just going to say we, because I feel like I'm a part of this team. I love this team so much, and I love watching them play. I can't help but feel like I'm a part of it. 
I know, know that I pronounced Tyon wrong, but I also still feel like I'm a part of this <laughs> JK's team. Even though I just read it off my piece of paper wrong, I still feel like I'm a part of this team. <laughs> well, that's, and that's something that a lot of baseball fans in general can say, and this is just speaking generally on the sport of baseball. If you're a diehard fan like you and I are, Kate, it's not hard to feel like you're a part of the team. And I don't care what level of fan you are, whether you're brand new or you're, you know, 30 years in, baseball is America's pastime, and if you're a fan, you will always be a fan. There's nothing that can turn you off of baseball. It's America's game. And the Yankees are the number one team right now that I'm looking at for the World Series, but we'll get to that later. So we will be right back with more baseball and New York Yankees talk for the postseason right after this break coming up on deck. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Welcome back. With the World Series right around the corner now, who do you think is going to take home the ring this season? So, I don't know if anybody watching noticed, but with the Yankees gear, I, I would love if the Yankees win the World Series. That is my prediction. The Yankees take it, get 28. It's been a long time coming. It's been almost two decades since we've had a World Series, so we'll see. I agree. I, I know I'm going to be biased here a little bit because obviously I am a Yankees fan, but I think if the Yankees can get through this Cleveland, this ALDS and get into the ALCS and maybe just knock down Houston a little bit, I think if they can get the first game against Houston, game one against Houston, I think that this Yankees team can take it all the way. I mean, the offense is there. Obviously, it's a little bit cold right now, but I think they can heat it up really quick again. It takes, it can be switched on in a day. I mean, that's just how baseball works. National League, my roster has just been gone. Yeah. <laughs> my, no. my National League predictions were gone. I had the Dodgers going back to the World Series, and they obviously are out to the Padres now. The Padres are off to the ALCS. The Padres and the Phillies were just two teams I did not have going like, to the like ALCS. What an, upset. <laughs> what an upset. The San Diego Padres? <laughs> I like, just, what? I didn't have either of those teams going uh. to my um, NLCS. But, I mean, baseball is a sport of it does not matter how you do in the regular season once you get to October. It's all about what happens in October. So now I think I'm going to have the Padres and the Yankees going to the World Series <laughs> together, and I never thought I would say that. I'd like to see a repeat of 2009, see the Phillies and the Yankees in the World Series together. Interesting matchup. I think I think it would be really funny, though, to see the Padres and the Yankees. I, think Yan it would I be. just, <laughs> you know, I thought it was going to be the Dodgers and the Yankees or something. But, but thank you so much for joining us here on deck tonight. Um, you can find us here not next Monday, but the Monday after that for another episode of On Deck. Dom, thank you once again for.